Welcome back to the Face Off Sports Network. I'm Anthony Servino. This is the week two NFL injury update to help you make the most informed lineup decisions for your fantasy football team and make the best NFL betting picks for this week's slate of games. Let's start at the top. Let's start with Austin Eckler dealing with an ankle injury. He hasn't practiced yet this week. Austin Eckler is doubtful to play. Now, Eckler doesn't exactly need to practice to play, but it does not look good. Eckler is obviously a big part of the Chargers offense. And if Char and if Eckler is in fact ruled out of this game, we need to be prepared. And the person who will step up is Joshua Kelly. Now, I'm all in on Joshua Kelly. I was drafting him as almost a Mr. Irrelevant in high stakes drafts and, and really all of my fantasy drafts because when Kellen Moore went from Dallas to the Chargers, I understood that Kellen Moore normally used multiple backs with Zeke and Tony Pollard. Now, I thought that Eckler would still be the dominant ball carrier and, and pass catcher for this backfield, but we saw a lot of of Joshua Kelly last week, and he was one of the more efficient fantasy football running backs. And now that Austin Eckler is banged up and unlikely to play, they're going to unlock Joshua Kelly, and he's in line for a monster role in a really tough matchup against the Titans. Now, the Titans, one of the better run defenses, and while you can throw on them, running is a little bit more difficult. So if we see Joshua Kelly get going on the ground in this matchup, this could be really good signs for things to come and a potential two-headed monster backfield. I know it's an unpopular take, but it would not shock me. Listen, Austin Eckler's on a walk year. He's pushing 30 years old. The new offensive coordinator likes using multiple backs. So there's a lot of reasons to believe that Austin Eckler's workload, he's going to concede a little bit of it to Joshua Kelly if he remains effective. Now, we have some good news on the injury front, and that is in the form of Travis Kelsey. We know Travis Kelsey did not play last week. However, breaking news, Chiefs head coach Andy Reid has already told the press that Travis Kelsey will play in week two against the Jacksonville Jaguars. We know Travis Kelsey has a positive track record of success against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Chiefs are coming off of a week one season opening loss to the Detroit Lions. They got shocked. They're a little bit pissed off. But I think this is going to be one of those games where Patrick Mahomes is going to distribute the football to his primary pass catcher, Hall of Fame tight end Travis Kelsey. And if you have Travis Kelsey, this is a no-brainer. I don't even have to say it. He best be in your fantasy football lineups. Expect a really, really big game for Travis Kelsey and company. Let's go to Jerry Judy. And Jerry Judy was somebody who had a little bit of an erratic offseason, uh, had the injury in August, and we saw his ADP, which was right around late third, fourth round, plummet. You were getting Jerry Judy because we all thought, well, he's going to miss some time. He's going to miss a couple of weeks. And as we got closer to the start of the regular season, the Broncos said, hey, we're not going to put Jerry Judy on IR. We're not going to put him on the PUP list. And what does that mean? When you're on IR or one of those lists to start the season, mandatory four games missed. So when they elected not to place him on there, it told us that, well, the Broncos expect him back sooner than in week five. And if you drafted Jerry Judy at the value, because I, I was getting him in the sixth round in a lot of spots as we come, as, as the fantasy redraft season come to a close, you're getting Jerry Judy at a big time discount. And he really only missed the season opener. He missed one game, which means if we get a healthy season moving forward out of Jerry Judy and he plays like the guy we saw last season because there was not a lot of bright spots for the Denver Broncos offense, but Jerry Judy was one of them. Well, he could potentially be a valuable league winner because of where you drafted him and his potential ceiling. And 
Sean Payton, head coach of Denver Broncos, already saying this isn't even a game time call. He will, in fact, play in week two against the Commanders. Not the greatest matchup, but it's also not the mo most difficult one. I think the Denver Broncos are going to want to come out and, and, and chuck the ball down the field to one of the more explosive wide receivers in the NFL. And there is no expectation of Jerry Judy being on a snap count, which is even better news for Jerry Judy fantasy managers. Let's go to another high profile wide receiver. It is DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. Went to the Tennessee Titans. I absolutely did not love it. I was drafting Je uh, I was drafting DeAndre Hopkins all offseason before he signed with the expectation. Well, he's going to go one of those one of those Super Bowl winning teams. He's going to go to to Buffalo, who needs a wide receiver. He's going to go to Kansas City, who needed a wide receiver. He wants to chase a ring instead. He goes to the Tennessee Titans. Gets a little bit of a payday. Uh, Force fed targets in Week One. Grabbed a bunch. Didn't do a ton in fantasy football. Ryan Tannehill did not look good. Now it was an angry environment. Playing at the Saints is really, really difficult for most offenses, and it showed this could be a bounce-back spot for the Tennessee Titans against the Chargers, who were kind of lit up through the air by the Miami Dolphins. But the problem is, if you're a DeAndre Hopkins fantasy manager, you really need to pay attention here. Dealing with an ankle injury, he's listed as questionable, but the expectation is that DeAndre Hopkins is a legitimate game-time decision, which means we're not going to know if he's truly a game-time decision. We're not going to know if he's going to play until inactives are announced for that slate of games. So if you have DeAndre Hopkins and you're depending on him, you need to prepare with another option on your bench. Let's go to another significant injury we need to talk about. And here's a fun one uh, because I never thought Zach Moss was going to be fantasy relevant, but here we are, Zach Moss, due to the Jonathan Taylor uh, on the pup and everything that's going on with the organization. Zach Moss, who I believe busted his forearm in the offseason, is now good to go. Removed off the injury report completely. And the expectation is that not only will Zach Moss play, but per Indianapolis Star beat writer Nate Atkins, that Moss will function as the number one running back at the, for the Colts against the Houston Texans. Evan Hull is dealing with the in, an injury. He's not going to play. Deion Jackson did not look good last week. So Zach Moss really has a good chance to take a stranglehold of this backfield. And at least until we have a, or, or some clarity on Jonathan Taylor, like, Zach Moss could own this backfield for the rest of the season if Jonathan Taylor gets traded or decides, hey, I don't care about that accrued year of free agency. I'm just not going to play this year. So if you have Zach Moss or if he's on your waiver wire, go pick him up because he's going to have fantasy football value. I don't know how much, but he's going to bring some fantasy value to your football team because he's probably one of the better running backs on this depth chart right now, not named Jonathan Taylor. Let's go to another injury. We had some flip-flops in terms of conflicting reports this week on Deontay Johnson dealing with the hamstring injury. Initially, this was going to be a long-term, right around four-week injury. And then another report came out saying that, oh, well, Deontay Johnson's day-to-day. -day. Dealing with the injury, Deontay Johnson failed to practice on Friday, and it looks like, He's on the wrong side of being active. Now, he's not fully ruled out, but I, I don't think this guy is going to play. And if he does play, he might be on a pitch count. When there are conflicting reports, that's a red flag. And normally, I'm going to err on the side of the worst-case scenario because if you don't worry about the worst-case scenario and you're, oh, I'm going to start Deontay Johnson. I don't have to pick anybody up on waivers. And then he's ruled out. You're, you're kind of beat. So prepare as if Deontay's not going to play. And guess what? If he does play and you want to start him, 
then you can. He gets a matchup against the Browns. This Browns defense looked really, really good last week against Cincinnati Bengals, completely dismantling that Joe Burrow-led offense. But we know that Joe Burrow and this Bengals offense, they, they kind of start slow, right? And, and then they start picking it up around week three, week four. So I would say, yeah, Bengals offense, slow starters, combining with, well, this is a pretty good Browns defense. Uh, but but this could be a good situation for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Deontay Johnson if Deontay Johnson plays. I, I believe he gets a, a good amount of targets as usual. And if he does not play and Allen Robinson's on your waiver wire, go pick Allen Robinson up. Yes, George Pickens going to get his fair share. But last week, Allen Robinson, I, I believe, tied with George Pickens for the team lead in snaps. Uh, Allen Robinson, you know, got a bunch of targets. And I, I know he leaves a bad taste in fantasy manager's mouth, but this guy was free in fantasy leagues if you drafted him. If not, you got him on a waiver wire. He's going to be the primary veteran pass catcher. And look what these veteran pass – I mean, look at Robert Woods. Nobody expected the damn thing out of him. And the young quarterback in Houston heavily leaned on him. And, and we know Deontay is the veteran of this group preceding Allen Robinson, and he's heavily leaned on with targets by Kenny Pickett. So he could be staring in the same situation. If Deontay's down, Allen Robinson might be the guy. In this offense, so prepare for the worst with Deontay Johnson. And if he does play, you want to play him, you put him in your fantasy lineup. Let's go to another wide receiver, and that's Jacoby Myers. And Jacoby Myers was the most productive receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders last week. However, one week and done, Jacoby Myers in the league's concussion protocol. He will not play. He is ruled out. This isn't a great matchup against the Buffalo Bills. This is an angry, angry Buffalo Bills bunch. They got embarrassed on Monday night football by the Aaron Rodgers less and the Zach Wilson led New York Jets and Josh Allen and looked putrid with his with his decision making as we saw last season as well. And the Bills need to come out, they need to punch the Raiders in the face. And if the Bills get to that big time lead, if you have Devontae Adams, who is no longer on the injury report, you obviously start him with confidence after a shaky week one. But if you need an injury replacement for Jacoby Myers, do not be afraid of picking up Hunter Renfro. I know Hunter Renfro didn't do a damn thing last year, but a few years ago, he was uber productive, gave fantasy managers and dynasty a lot of hope to draft this guy. Hunter Renfro can play football without Jacoby Myers. Hunter Renfro has some significant fantasy value, high PPR floor, and what's going to be a tough matchup for the Raiders, I expect them to be playing from behind and trailing. And in that situation, there's going to be a lot of pass catching opportunities for guys like Hunter Renfro and Devontae Adams. Let's go to Green Bay, uh, who's dealing with a slew of injuries. We know Christian Watson did not play last week. Well, he's questionable. He did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday, but he was upgraded to a limited participant for Friday's practice session. That's really good news because he practiced in a limited capacity on Friday today. It gives him a chance to suit up and play on Sunday. Um, if Christian Watson is once again ruled out, expect Dubs and Jaden Reed to be the primary wide receivers in this offense. So Christian Watson, a little bit of a bright spot in terms of practicing in a limited capacity. And if Christian Watson is active, I think you can safely put him in your fantasy football lineup against the Atlanta Falcons. Let's go to another Green Bay Packer, Aaron Jones, who blew up against the Chicago Bears. That's just what Aaron Jones does. He likes to score touchdowns against the Chicago Bears. He likes to slice and dice the Chicago Bears. Well, Aaron Jones, questionable for week two against the Falcons with the hamstring injury. He did not practice whatsoever at all. This week, he's a seven-year vet. He doesn't need to practice to be on the football field. He knows this offense. He's productive in this offense. This is another situation where you might have to prepare for the worst. 
And if Aaron Rodgers ultimately plays without limitations, then you can just slide him into your starting running back spot. But you have to prepare as if Aaron Rod- Aaron Jones is not going to play. And if you have to sift through your waiver wire, go ahead. If you have somebody good on your bench you can put in there, go ahead. Because you don't want to be stuck in a situation where, hey, he's questionable, he's going to play. No, he's qu- he's questionable, but he did not practice this week. And, and, and some coaches... Uh, that's a bad sign. So definitely monitor Aaron Jones going into Sunday's matchup against the Falcons. Obviously, if Aaron Jones sits, A.J. Dillon is going to be the primary ball carrier for your Green Bay Packers. Let's start winding down here. Another significant tight end injury to worry about. Mark Andrews did not play week one. But, Dealing with the quad injury, he fully participated in today's practice. He's fully expected to play, barring any setbacks, in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals. And we know Lamar Jackson perennially plays extremely well against the Cincinnati Bengals. And I get that the Baltimore offense looked a little bit of sluggish against Houston, but Houston's a, a better defense than what people think. Uh, And and really, they didn't have any preseason in a new system, so I kind of expected a little bit of a slow start. Now you get Mark Andrews back in a familiar matchup for Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews and the rest of this high-flying Baltimore Ravens offense. This is a big-time bounce-back spot for the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, and Mark Andrews. He needs to make up for his fantasy managers who because he didn't play week one. This could be a big-time spot for Mark Andrews to pop in your fantasy football lineups. And of course, if there is a setback, it's going to be another Isaiah likely week and likely did disappoint in week one. Let's go to another tight end. And yes, Darren Waller and and people are going to go crazy about Darren Waller this year because Darren Waller, we saw the injury, the hamstring injury flare up heading into week one. And apparently there was a report going around that he's going to be dealing with this hamstring injury all season long. It's going to linger. It's not going to go away, but it doesn't seem like Darren Waller is too much worried about it. He's a veteran. He's going to get veteran rest. And the good thing is that, Darren Waller does not have an injury designation going into week two's bout against the Arizona Cardinals. That's really good news because, number one, Logan Thomas, remember him, had a pretty good game last week against the Cardinals. Now you have Darren Waller. Now you have a Giants offense that was embarrassed at home in the rain on national TV against my Dallas Cowboys. And Darren Waller, the big-time offseason acquisition that was going to bring the New York Giants to the promised land and justify that Daniel Jones contract. He's healthy. He's good to go. It's a great matchup. You're going to fire up Darren Waller. This is a guy who could finish as a top-five tight end in week two. I'm all about it because I have a lot of exposure to Darren Waller. So this is really, really good news. Let's finish up. We have two more guys to go over one is my guy, another one of my guys this offseason, and that's Brees Hall. Coach Robert Sala told the press that Brees Hall is going to remain on a pitch count against Dallas. Well, we saw Brees Hall on a pitch count last week against a tough Buffalo Bills defense, and he went absolutely positively ballistic. Brees Hall is that special type of talent that even on a limited workload, he could still do special, special things. So, yeah, I don't care if Brees Hall's on a pitch count. I didn't care last week in the season opener, and it worked out, and I don't give a damn again. As long as Brees Hall is in the football game, he has a pulse and a helmet on, I'm willing to put him in my fantasy football lineups. He's a special player, and I believe Brees Hall's a top five running back in the NFL. He has shown it time and time again. He hasn't even played with Aaron Rodgers yet, and he might never will. And all this guy does is go ballistic with high efficiency, explosive production. I don't love this matchup against my Dallas Cowboys, but if they have a hole in the defense, you can run on them. You can run it straight up the middle. They'll give up the big play to the running back in the passing game. So this could be a sneaky, nice spot for Brees Hall. You're going to fire him up against Dallas. But again, 
a lot of boom bust variants here because Dallas is either going to give up some big plays or they're absolutely positively going to make Zach Wilson's life a living hell. Let's finish up with Brandon Cooks from my Dallas Cowboys. And Brandon Cooks is going to be a game time decision. There are rumors going around that he's dealing with an MCL injury, and those rumors are true. He has sustained an MCL injury in week one. I don't know when, I don't know where, because Dallas hardly had to play any offense to put up 40 on the New York Giants. Um, but Brandon Cooks on the injury report with the MCL, true game time decision. The Jets' defense is really good. They showed this against Josh Allen on Monday Night Football. I don't love Brandon Cooks in this matchup. I think this is a guy I'm going to sit regardless of his injury status. Yes, he can always pop for the big play, but I, I'd rather take my chances with other guys like Jordan Addison, who just played and, and looked terrific. Uh, you know, Maybe you have Cooks and Jerry Judy. You put Jerry Judy in your lineup. But if you need to sift through the waiver wire, if you're desperate and have to start a wide receiver from the Cowboys because there's nothing else, look for Michael Gallup or Jalen Tolbert on your waiver wire, all right, guys, this is another fantastic injury update for week two of the NFL season. Good luck in your fantasy football matchups, and we will see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for the Faceoff Sports Network Start Sit Show featuring myself and a couple of other good guys. Till next time, we'll see you later.